The leafhopper group is another very large and important family with many subfamilies. Many are known to be involved in transmitting plant viruses and mycoplasmas in field crops and among trees. Aster yellows and elm yellows are two such diseases. While most landscape trees, shrubs, and flowers have a specific species of leafhopper that attacks them, there are generalist leafhoppers that can feed on a wide range of plants. The potato leafhopper has been confirmed to be able to feed and successfully breed on over 200 plant species in 25 families. Leafhoppers have three feeding methods. Phloem feeders, xylem feeders, and mesophyll or leaf cell feeders. The plant hopper group is also very diverse but rarely important to the health of landscape plants. The family Cicadellidae, which contains the leafhoppers, is one of the largest families in the Hemiptera with over 22,000 species worldwide and about 3,000 species described from North America, north of Mexico. In general, they are somewhat wedge-shaped. Adults have the front wings leathery and the hind wings membranous. These are extremely active insects with jumping hind legs. The nymphs generally move side to side, somewhat crab-like. They have good vision and will usually move to the other side of a leaf or stem if they see you coming. Of course, they will jump if hiding doesn't work. Leafhoppers that penetrate the mesophyll of leaves feed on cell contents and this leaves numerous white flecks or stippling on the leaf surface. Those that feed on phloem or xylem bundles commonly block these vascular bundles which can decrease nutrient and water flow. This can result in wilting and discoloration in a syndrome called hopper burn. The white apple leafhopper will serve as a general example of leafhoppers on trees and shrubs. While this is very common on apple, including ornamental crab apples, it also reproduces on most of the other prunus fruit trees as well as hawthorn. The adults are a white color, sometimes with yellow overtones. They are only about 1 8 inch long and are normally located on leaf undersurfaces. The nymphs are also white and they feed from leaf undersurfaces. These are mesophyll feeders so they make white flecks on the leaves. The adults and nymphs produce tar spots which can be deposited on fruit making it less suitable for sale. On ornamental plants the tar spots are usually not obvious. This pest overwinters its eggs inserted into the outermost layer of bark of small branches. The overwintering eggs begin to hatch in late April, usually when tree flower buds are beginning to show some color. The nymphs undergo five instars which take about a month to complete. New adults first appear in late May and live for a long time, well into July. Adults feed for about two weeks before being ready to lay eggs. Mated females now insert eggs into the petioles, mid veins, and lateral veins of leaves. Each female can produce about 60 eggs. The long egg laying time spreads out the presence of nymphs in July through August. Summer adults appear in August and insert eggs into the bark to overwinter. The potato leafhopper is one of the most widespread leafhoppers found in crops across North America. It is apparently a semi-tropical species that generally overwinters in southern states as eggs inserted into common host plants. However, adults and nymphs are often found in the winter where freezing temperatures don't occur. In early spring, newly developed adults ride storm fronts into northern locations. The vast majority of these migrants are females. When they arrive in northern locations, they are most attracted to alfalfa fields since potato and bean crops are usually not yet available. They can utilize over 200 plants for food and reproduction. They often complete one generation in the spring, about the time that the first cutting of alfalfa occurs. The new adults quickly fly to surrounding crops and this is the time that they often end up feeding on trees and shrubs that now have soft expanded shoots and leaves. Females insert eggs into the leaf petioles and major veins of host plants. Three to four generations have been documented in northern locations. 
In these images I wanted to show the effects of hopper burn. Maples appear to be very susceptible to this syndrome when potato leafhoppers feed and develop as the new growth is expanding. The general characteristic of hopper burn is that developing leaves wilt at their tips, chlorosis and premature leaf drop is common, and stunting of the growth occurs. Generally, hopper burn was thought to be either a toxin in the salivary secretions or simple clogging of the vascular bundles through the construction of feeding sheaths as the stylets are inserted. Toxins would explain how plants would react to mesophyll feeding leafhoppers and feeding canals clogging vascular bundles would explain clogging and wilting. Now it is believed that those leafhoppers that perform lancing penetration of stems or leaf tissues that end up in the vascular bundles are most responsible for hopper burn. The physical damage made by the stylets alone causes almost no reaction and salivary secretions alone cause minor reaction. But Stylet penetration with salivary secretions induce a cascade of cellular reaction resulting in callous tissue formation which can completely clog the vascular bundles. This cascade takes about eight days to happen and is one of the reasons why leafhoppers are often not found on plants exhibiting the damage. The rose leafhopper looks a lot like the white apple leafhopper being a tiny 1 8 inch long white to light green species. In fact, the rose leafhopper can also be found on apple and other fruit trees during the summer months. However, it can only successfully overwinter as eggs inserted into the bark of rose canes. Eggs hatch in mid to late April usually when rose leaves have elongated 2 to 3 inches. Nymphs are mesophyll feeders using the maceration technique of feeding from the lower leaf surface. This produces white flecking on the upper surface of the leaves. Flecking is usually concentrated along the major leaf veins, but it can also occur around the margins of the leaves. The first generation adults begin to show up in late May through June. These can remain on rows or fly to other plants to feed and breed. This species often has three generations during the summer months, so flecking of the rose leaves can accumulate and cause early leaf drop by midsummer. The red banded leafhopper seems to be a species complex with six recognized species. These are also called candy striped leafhoppers. One species seems to feed only on rhododendron while the other species often have multiple hosts that include perennial flowers and woody plants. This complex is also confirmed to transmit Pierce's disease, which is a bacterial wilt disease of elms, oaks, and some other trees. It belongs to the sharpshooter subfamily of leafhoppers. Most of these are larger species and they get their name because both nymphs and adults forcefully expel their honeydew which will land well away from the insects. These feed on phloem bundles and can occasionally cause puckering of the leaves and expanding shoots of perennials. But classic hopper burn is not attributed to these leafhoppers. There are dozens of species of leafhoppers that regularly use grasses for their hosts. The Draculocephala sharpshooters are large and conspicuous species. The nymphs are often brown or green and the adults have bright light green bodies and forewings. There are about 30 species in this genus and most feed on grasses and sedges. Damage to turf is rarely detected but their feeding where grass is grown for seed can result in poor seed production. The geminate leafhopper is another common species in warm season grasses. The aster leafhopper is a common species that feeds on a wide range of plants and like the potato leafhopper it is highly migratory in behavior. They overwinter as eggs in southern grasses and small grain plants. After completing their first generation on these plants the adults fly northward where they can feed on a wide range of field crops as well as weeds such as Queen Anne's lace, ragweed, and dandelion. These weeds can harbor the phytoplasma disease aster yellows. As the name implies, the disease is endemic in plants in the aster family, but the disease can also be in wheat, barley, and plants in the carrot family. 
The nymphs and adults can pick up the disease from an infected plant and transport the pathogen to another plant where it is injected during feeding. Aster yellows often cause a severe stunting and distortion of stems, leaves, and flowers. Infected plants can't be cured, so they have to be destroyed. Two to three generations of this leafhopper occur in the northern part of the range, and more can occur in southern parts of its range. As stated before, with 3,000 species found in North America, there are few plants that don't have one or more species of leafhoppers. Of these species, only a few cause hopper burn that is easily detected, and the rest generally cause flecking on host leaves. Those that also transmit diseases can be major problems in crop production. Diseases like aster yellows can also be a major issue in perennial plant production. Hopper burn on trees and shrubs can greatly lengthen the time that it takes for nurseries to get plants to sellable size. When plants are stunted by hopper burn, it is nearly impossible to force additional growth that season. Since leafhoppers are secretive in habits, they are often missed by the casual gardener. However, some of the large sharpshooters are hard to miss, either by their colors or size. In most cases, these don't warrant control in the landscape. The superfamily Fulgorodia has insects that are generally called plant hoppers. As their name implies, both the nymphs and adults can jump. In fact, many groups look a lot like leafhoppers. The main difference is that the Fulgorids have the antennae attached to the head just below the eyes, not in front of the eyes. The two basal segments of the antennae are also greatly enlarged, with the terminal segment being a hair-like spine. There are many body shapes with the fronds of the head often being greatly enlarged or modified into a horn-like process. In landscapes, most are mere curiosities as they rarely cause much damage to host plants. Flatted plant hoppers are one of the more common groups. The eggs overwinter in host plant tissues. Nymphs that hatch in the spring are gregarious, often clustering in groups on leaves or stems of their host plants. They have copious wax glands which produce waxy threads in which the flattened nymphs hide. The nymphs often take four to six weeks to finish their development and the adults usually remain in groups on branches or limbs. These can be very noticeable and the groups will often take flight together when disturbed. However, after being scattered, they will often return to the same branch to feed together again. Most northern species have only one generation per summer. Acanaleid plant hoppers have very similar behavior to the flatted species. However, the nymphs of the Acanaleid leafhoppers are often hunchbacked and they also secrete patches of waxy threads from the tip of their abdomens. The adults can look very much like the flatted plant hoppers, but if you look at the wing venation of the adult, Acanaleid plant hoppers have an irregular reticulation of the veins, while flatted leaf hoppers have veins more regular and parallel. While most of the plant hoppers are not considered to be important pests, species in other countries are. In 2014, the spotted lanternfly was discovered in eastern Pennsylvania. It is a native of China, Vietnam, and India. It is a large and colorful species with a wingspan of nearly two inches. The adults are gray with pink overtones and, a, and the wings are covered with black spots. The hind wings are a bright orange or red color. The nymphs are also brightly colored being red or black and covered with white spots. The preferred host is the invasive tree of heaven but this plant hopper will feed on a wide range of trees, including most of the fruit trees and even grapes. Since its detection and in spite of eradication and quarantines, this pest has steadily spread to most of the eastern half of Pennsylvania and some surrounding states. This pest has one generation per year with the nymphs taking nearly two months to mature. The females attach bunches of eggs to host trees and other substrates. Then they cover the eggs with a shiny resinous material. 
As previously stated, plant hoppers can take on some rather bizarre shapes. The Dictyophorid leafhoppers often have projections from the front of the head or round body shapes. Mikorinka microrhina is a larger species being nearly an inch long. The nymphs and adults feed on buttonbush, rose mallow, and weeping lovegrass. The partridge bug, Scolops sulcopes, is often found in prairies where bindweed is growing. The black leaf-legged plant hopper, Phyllocerus atra, is found where sumac is growing. With its round shape and electrolyte front wings, it can be easily mistaken for a beetle of some sort. Here are some more examples of plant hoppers. Caposiris iroides is another delphacid that has extremely enlarged antennae. It is occasionally found in, on landscape flower stems and leaves. Apache dugeri is a derbid which has another extreme modification of the front of the head. This species is occasionally attracted to lights at night and its curious shape can cause questions to be asked. Sixus nervosa is a typical cissid representative which has many species that look a lot like some of the leafhoppers. Species can hold the wings flat over the body or more roof-like as in the leafhoppers.